Hi, everyone. Welcome to this podcast episode of the Next Now podcast with Cheryl Cran. I want want to share with you some more survey results that have been done uh, through Fast Company magazine. This was done recently around what are the perks that workers want in today's hybrid workplace. And what's really interesting is oftentimes we think money and obviously money right now is something that a lot of workers are really, it's not that they're demanding it, but they're actually looking at, you know, their worth, like, what am I worth? What value do I add to the organization? This has been going on for over a decade, but since the pandemic and since the rise of hybrid, more and more workers are really looking at compensation, Uh, but they're looking at actual flexibility as part of that compensation factor. So for example, 59% of over 5,000 people who were surveyed by Fast Company said that they wanted a four day work week as their premier perk. So what they're saying is keep paying me what what I'm being paid, but make me work four days versus five. And that gives them a three day weekend. Now, the four-day work week is not new. Um, We actually talked about this decades ago about workers and a lot of manufacturing organizations were going into like, you know, three on, two off, a lot of police force or other types of industries have been doing sort of that type of thing, but still making it like long hours in those timeframes. With the four-day work week, we're really talking eight hours a day for four days, so 32 hours a week at the same pay. Now, many countries are already doing this with great success. European countries like Finland, uh, Iceland, those kinds of places have already been implementing the four-day work week with great success. I think what we're up against here in North America is that work-hard culture where it's almost you get a badge or a medal for putting in a 60-hour week versus a 32- or a 40-hour week. Well, what we're also seeing, though, is we can now go to a four-day work week because of technology innovation, digital transformation. We have the tools. And because more and more of us can WFA, work from anywhere, the four-day work week just makes more sense. Now, for people who are working primarily as freelancers or contractors or entrepreneurs, they've already naturally set their schedule to that because of work-life balance. And I'm going to flip that and say life-work balance. I think we're now at an opportunity for corporations, for larger businesses to really evaluate the four-day work week specifically in the hybrid workplace. And so 59% said, hey, the biggest perk I want is a four-day work week. Now, this is important because we're in the midst of a great resignation or the great reevaluation, as many are calling it, which means people are leaving their current work because they're looking for more flexibility. As an organization, if you have the ability to shift to a four-day work week offering, you have a much greater chance at attracting talent and keeping them based on that factor alone. Now, it's interesting, 27% of those surveyed in the Fast Company survey said that they wanted a raise. So I know for some of you listening, you go, well, how do you justify the four-day work week at current compensation? And then how do you justify four-day work week and a raise? Well, we're in a worker's market. This is this is where workers get to ask for what they want. And if they're really good and if they're in demand and if they add value, they're likely going to get it. I can tell you as a consultant, I work with a number of organizations. And right now, every organization I'm working with is reevaluating their compensation plans because they're looking at market. They're looking at their four-day work week. They're looking at their structure. They're looking at how many people do they need on full-time salary with benefits. They're looking at how do we, you know, shift the work so that some of it's contract, some of it's freelance, some of it's project-based. The opportunity for all organizations right now is to reevaluate the number of full-time roles and and really what's needed for full-time roles and the number of part-time roles. And then, as I said, the roles that can be outsourced to freelance or contract. So when you look at that 27% saying they want to raise, the automatic thinking is linear thinking, oh, well, that means we're, you know, we're going to be out of budget with what we're giving people. No, I see it as an invitation to reevaluate the overall structure of the workforce and really look at it from that that equation of, you know, number of full-time, part-time contract. And I think that I've been saying this for a long time, that the opportunity now is to reevaluate, revamp, readjust, reorganize the structure of how work gets done. And so we're in the midst of that now in a post-hybrid or a hybrid reality workplace. It means that we're all looking at what's the most cost-efficient way to do this, 
what is the most highest leverage value for this, this job that or this work that needs to be done. And if this work is a full-time position and it adds value, then yes, I would want to give a raise because I want to keep those high value people in their roles for the success of the business. Uh, 10% of the people surveyed said that they want unlimited vacation. (laughs) Interesting. 10% wants unlimited vacation. Now, if you kind of link that up with the people that might have said four-day work week as their premier perk and then the raise, unlimited vacation sounds good. But generally, what we have found that even with unlimited vacation, people don't generally take it. The, The max that people will take is, you know, and the old model is that if you worked in a business for 30 years, you accumulated eight to 12 weeks of vacation. But rarely was that, I can tell you from experience and anecdotally, rarely do people take that much vacation time. So that to me is becomes a, a negotiable, you know, it might sound good to say unlimited vacation just from a, an attraction standpoint, but it'd be interesting to see that one in action and how you'd apply it. I do know many organizations have been offering sabbaticals as a attractor factor for millennial workers, Gen Z workers, Gen Z workers. Uh, And the sabbatical is very appealing because it allows people to go and travel for six months or a year and then come back. It's very disruptive for the business. However, I would say it was more disruptive pre-pandemic than it is now because of hybrid. So if somebody's on a sabbatical, um, but you really need, you know, to, to talk to them that, that you could still do that with hybrid as in, you know, setting aside a few hours to say, hey, could you help us with this or bring us up to speed or give us insight? So that's kind of like that accessible accessibility that hybrid has given us through technology kind of makes the unlimited vacay to me something you could use to attract. But as I said, I don't I don't know and I don't have enough data to show whether that's you know, if somebody offered an unlimited vacation, what that means or what the implications mean. I think what I'll do for a future podcast is find some companies that maybe have that as an offering and do some research for you and bring that back for for further discussion in a future episode. So I want you to really think about that for yourself. Of the perks, you know, what would you want? Would you want the four-day work week? Would you want a raise? Would you want unlimited vacation? Would you want all three? And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people I talk to, there's kind of the, these schools of thought where, you know, one, one says, you know, whatever happened to good old fashioned work and people just being happy to have a job, well, those days are long gone. And then there's others going, well, Cheryl, what do you say about these tech companies that are laying a bunch of people off? Well, yes, those companies actually overinflated the number of workers they needed pre-pandemic. And then of course the pandemic did do a shuffle and a rebalancing, but I'm telling you, those workers are not out of work. They're being scooped up by other organizations because we are in that workers market. So if we look at those perks, uh, the biggest one, four day work week, I blogged about this as well. Go to my website, nextmapping.com, and you'll see that there's a blog post about the four day work week um, and, and really you know, see that as something. And then as an organization, ask yourself, is this something that your organization is already looking into? Um, if you're a smaller organization, it'd be easier to implement. If you're a large multinational organization, are there, you know, uh, districts or departments or, or countries where they are doing and testing the four-day work week? Uh, questions to ask ourselves. But I know for myself, being self-employed entrepreneur, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, one might say that I could give myself unlimited vacation, <laughs> But then I also wouldn't have a business. So I do get the dichotomy of these perks and what they mean to business. But honestly, if we look overall at what does it mean for the worker, the workers are looking for flexibility. They're looking to be valued. They're looking to add value. And they're looking to have a life first and work second. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you for tuning in. You can get my new book, Super Crucial Human, on Amazon or wherever books are sold. You can also join me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Instagram. See you soon. Bye.